Welcome back. This is the fifth video in the Metaprogramming and Lean series. The plan here, we're done with theory for now. Let's just sit down and do some concrete examples of writing tactics. Um, and I should point out that there are some links in the description below um, to some exercises that you can do yourself if you want some extra practice. We'll cover a bit more in the next and last video that could be relevant to some of those exercises, but if you want to get a head start, you should feel free. So we're going to start off by implementing everybody's favorite first tactic, assumption. The assumption tactic should look through the local context and try to find some hypothesis there that will close the current goal. So we're going to show off a few things here. We're going to show off how we modify the goal state. Um, we're going to show off how we look through the local context. Well, we've discussed that a little bit already. Um, and we're going to talk about error handling. So the example that I want to solve here um, I'll give ourselves um, let's give ourselves an example at the bottom that should be finished when we write this tactic as sum. Well, we have some things in the context. Our goal is to prove C. We have the assumption C. So our tactic should discover that fact HC um, in the local context. And to write this, we see we want it to be called a sump. So we're, we need something like metadef a sump. Tactic unit, um, and we need to implement it. So it's probably a good guess if we want to search the local context for something that matches the target, we should get the local context in the target. Okay. Um, and we see in our proof state, we now have an expression and a list of expressions um, that we should do something with. Well, effectively what we want to do is check every element of the local context and see if it matches the target in some way. So let's write a function that checks if one expression matches the target. We won't deal with the list yet. Um, let's call it test. We're going to take a hypothesis and a target, which are both expressions. And let's return a Boolean. So true if they match, false if they don't. Well, here's something to be careful of. If I'm giving it a hypothesis, the hypothesis isn't a type itself. The hypothesis will be a local constant that has a certain type. For example, when I look at the proof state down here, I have a local constant whose name is HA, whose type is A. So I don't actually want to compare the local constant HA itself with the target. I want to compare the type of that local constant with the target. So what my test function should do, so we're going to get the, the type of the hypothesis type and compare it to the target. So let's call that hypothesis type. And we can use the infer type tactic that we've seen to get that. And then we want to check if the type of the hypothesis is equal to the target. So maybe we say something like return uh, type equals target. So this is of type tactic bool. We're accessing the tactic state because we need to infer the type of something, um, and we're producing a Boolean. True if these types are equal. Okay, so this compares one local constant in our context with the goal, um, but really we want to recurse over a list somehow. We want to see if we find anything in the local context that passes this test, then um, we want to use it to close the goal. So let's write something recursive. And I call this map over LC. And we'll take the target again as an expert. We're going to pass this a list of expressions. And our return type will be tactic unit. Um, I'm hoping that you've seen definitions by recursion in lean before in one context or another. Um, 
OK, well, if we give it the empty list, then our tactic must have failed. That means we haven't found anything in the local context that matches the target. So we can fail, and we can even give it an error message to fail with. Matches the target. Um, otherwise, if we have a head and a tail, now we need to uh, we need to check if the first thing in our list actually matches. So let's apply our test. And then we can case split on that. If is match, then exact h. Otherwise, we're going to recurse. Um, so what is this exact that I did here? Well, exact in, um, in tactic programming works pretty much the same as the exact that you're used to when you're writing proofs. It will try to close the, the first goal completely using the expression h. So the only difference here to what you're used to, here we're giving it something of type expr instead of actually writing out a proof term. Um, but otherwise, exact works exactly like you might guess. Um, so this recursive function should try everything in the local context, or try everything in the list of expressions that we give it, at least. Um, if one of them matches the target, we'll call exact. Otherwise, we'll continue mapping over the list until we fail at the end. So we can finish our sump tactic by saying, uh, map over LC, um, target context. And look at that. We just finished our proof down here. Completed the assump tactic, and it closes the goal. So this works, but we're not really taking full advantage of the tactic monad here. Um, so the tactic monad, um, because tactics are able to fail, um, and we're able to provide alternative routes, effectively we can backtrack. Um, and so instead of returning a bool in our test function up here, I think we can streamline this quite a bit. Um, instead of having this be tactic bool, I'm going to make this test into a type tactic unit. Um, the idea here is that test should fail if the type of the hypothesis doesn't match the target, and it should succeed otherwise. Instead of saying return here, I'm going to change this to guard. We see uh, the documentation for guard says if we give it a prop, uh, condition that's false, we'll fail. Otherwise, we'll succeed. We'll return unit. Um, and so then, down here, I don't actually need to get the result um, of test. I can say, do the test. If I reach the next line, then I know that h matches the target, so I can just exact h. Put this in parentheses, and after that, if that fails, then I'm going to recurse like before. So I try my test. Presumably, if I reach this point, my test has succeeded. Otherwise, I failed, so I need to follow the alternate path, which is the recursive path. Notice we still close our goal. Um, this is a very common way to control the flow of a tactic that's doing some kind of search. Um, and as you get used to it, you can write some very, uh, very elegant code. Um, what else can we improve here? Well, I could move this exact. Notice that the test and the exact are following each other, and I don't use either in any other place. So why not change my test function to say exact type. Maybe I'll even change the name to test and exact. And I can delete this down here. If I only have one tactic here, I don't need the do. So I can make this a little cleaner, shortening my tactic more and more. So that's looking good. 
But also notice that this recursive pattern here, right? I, I go through my list looking for the first thing where some tactic succeeds. This itself is a very common and very general pattern. So we actually don't need to implement map over LC ourselves. We can use an existing function for it. Um, it's called uh, list.m first, the m for monadic. Um, we see we give it a monadic function. Uh, we give it a monadic function, we give it a list, um, and it either produces an output in data here or it fails. Um, so really, all we have to write here is ctx.m first, fun e, and now we need a tactic expert, and that tactic is just going to be test and exact e target. So I can delete my map over LC function completely. So that's pretty slick. But there's one more improvement we can make in this tactic. I'm going to write another example down here. Let's take a natural number. Let's assume that uh, n plus 0 equals 5. Why not? And let's try to prove that n equals 5. And our assump tactic fails. Even though n plus 0 is definitionally equal to n, our sum tactic isn't smart enough to match these up. This is because up here, when we compared the expressions, um, when we compared the type of the hypothesis um, to the target, we used the equality sign, which is strict syntactic equality. We asked, are these you know, concretely the same expression? We didn't ask, are they definitionally equal? Um, but in the tactic monad, remember, we have access to, uh, to what these definitions mean. So instead of asking, are these definitionally e or instead of asking, are they syntactically equal, we can check whether they are definitionally equal using the is def eek tactic. And is def eek has type tactic unit, which means it will succeed if they are definitionally equal and fail otherwise. So we don't need that guard anymore. Um, so. Uh, notice that I've made a slight mistake here. I should be checking type, type instead of the hypothesis. Um, that's better. And now we solve the second example as well. A few more optimizations here, just to get this as slick as we possibly can. This test is actually not even necessary. The exact tactic will fail if we give it something that doesn't match the goal. So, I mean, it's often useful to check definitional equality like this, but in this particular case, I don't have to do this test at all. Either my hypothesis does close the goal, in which case I'm done, or I'm not, and my tactic will fail um, just like it would fail at this line if things are not definitionally equal. So really, I can delete that entirely, which means down here, I can really just say exact uh, e, and change names, which means I don't need this line. And now we're at the stage where we can even turn this into a one-line tactic if we know a little monad notation. Instead of using do here, um, I can write something like this. I'll comment this just so we see the similarity. I can get the local context, and I can send it into the function list.mfirst partially applied to tactic exact. 
So this is some fancy no monad notation that we didn't talk about in the monad video. If this doesn't look familiar, don't worry about it. You can always write things with do. Um, but for writing very concise tactic scripts, this kind of thing can be very useful. So here's our nice, short, efficient assumption tactic. Uh, assumption tactic. Okay, so our next example, let's do something that adds to the local context. Um, and for a somewhat arbitrary example here, let's write a tactic that looks for every natural number that appears in the local context and adds a proof that the natural number is equal to itself. Um, not a very useful tactic, but good as an example. Um, so I'm going to call this add refls, and at the end, I should end up with um, proofs in the context a equals a, b equals b, and c equals c. Um, so I'm going to write something like meta def add refl. And how do we start? Presumably, we again need to get our local context. Um, and we're going to map some function over this. Um, let's leave that blank for now. And let's write a helper function that will take in a single uh, local constant from the context and see if it's a natural number. And if so, try to add this proof. So let's add single refl which takes in an expression. And this will also have type tactic unit. Um, what should our add single refl do? Um, well, OK, maybe we should start by saying, is our function, or is our uh, input, is our hypothesis e actually a natural number? Let's get the type of E. And again, we're going to write this using a backtracking or failure control flow. So we're going to say guard that the type of E is actually equal to nat. Notice I've quoted this nat to make it an expression because type is an expression. Um, OK, so at this point, either my tactics has failed, or I know that e is a natural number. Um, so how do I make a proof that e is equal to itself? Well, here's another useful tactic to know about. It's called make app. So what is the type of make app? This is for make application. Um, well, maybe I'll write it out so uh, the tooltip looks better. So the type of make app takes a name, a list of expressions, an optional transparency that we'll ignore, and it produces an expression. The idea here is that it applies the declaration with this name um, to this list of arguments. And these are only the explicit arguments. So we don't have to provide it any implicit arguments. Um, if you know eek.refl, you know it takes implicitly a type and then um, explicitly one element of that type. So this has made an application of reflexivity to the expression e. Um, it's a proof that e equals e. The next thing we want to do is add it to the local context. Well, if we add it to the local context, we need to name that hypothesis somehow. So let's generate a name. The get unused name tactic is very handy. It uh, takes an optional parameter that we'll talk about in a second. Um, but it produces a name that doesn't appear, which is exactly what we need. And then to add something to the local context, well, there were a few ways to, uh, to go about that. You can see in the, uh, in the documentation various other ways. But a good one for us to use now is the tactic note. What is the type of note? Well, it takes a name, 
it takes an option expert um, and it takes an expert. The idea here is that the name, well, that's what we want to call our new hypothesis in the context. Um, we can optionally give it the type. Um, we have to give it the value, um, the body of the thing that we're adding to the local context. Um, and it can try to figure out the type on its own by just inferring the type of the second argument. Um, so we're not going to give it the type. We're just going to say, figure out the type, figure out what uh, PF is proving, um, and add this as a new hypothesis. Um, and so this is basically done, except that the return type of note is tactic expert. It actually returns the thing that it adds to the context, which we don't need in this case. So to make things type check, we can just um, add a no op at the end. Skip is a tactic unit that does nothing. Um, OK, and then how do we finish this? We have our local context. And we want to map this add single refl over the local context. So maybe we think, uh, remembering from before, cgx.mmap primed, because we're mapping a tactic unit, find e add single refl e. Um, OK. Ah, complaining because I. Uh, an S there. But now it says failed. Why does it say that we failed? I see it added a whole bunch of things to the context. So we have a thing called x1, or x, x1, and x2, but our tactic still isn't working. At some point, it got to HA. As we mapped over the context, we're doing this to everything that we found. Well, it found HA. It inferred the type, tried to guard that the type was nat, and that failed because HA doesn't have type nat. And so mmap prime expects um, the tactic that we give it to succeed on everything in CTX. Really, we don't care if it, uh, if it fails on some of them. We don't care if it fails on all of them, actually. Our, our tactic, add single or add refl, should never fail. It should just work for whatever it finds and skip the rest. So there's a nice tactic combinator called try. What try will do is succeed. Well, if the tactic we give it succeeds, then try will succeed. And if the tactic we give it fails, then this becomes a successful no op. Nothing happens if add single refl fails. We just continue on as normal. And now our tactic succeeding. Um, so we've added these proofs A equals A, B equals B, C equals C. But notice they have very awkward names. Maybe we can do something about that. In this get unused name call, we can give it an optional um, a base for the names. So one good base might be, and we'll just call them H. Now we've named things H1, or H, H1, H2, just making sure that they're all unique. Um, but we could even go a step further. Um, e, the expression that we're giving it, we know that's a local constant because it came from the, uh, from the local context. And there's a function on experts called local pp name. This, if our expression is a local constant, this will produce the, uh, the pretty printed name. So if I use the pretty printed name of e as the base um, for my get unused name, then that's a bit better. These are named a1, b1, and c1. So maybe not perfect, but a little bit prettier. So a few important notes from this tactic. Well, make app is a very important one. Um, this is how we, this is one way that we can create applications um, using the internals of Lean, using the elaborator, looking things up in the environment to actually construct a well-formed expression rather than just 
creating raw expressions on our own and hoping that we did it correctly and that things type check. In fact, the stack will fail if I give it an argument that doesn't make sense. Um, get unused name, also a useful tactic. Note is a very handy tactic if you want to add things to the context. And as I said, there are some variants there as well. Um, but on the topic of make app, um, this worked because this was a relatively simple application to make. I mean, we just have a named constant that we wanted to apply to one argument, and we wanted the elaborator to fill in um, one implicit argument for us. But what if we wanted something a bit more complicated? What if instead of making equalities, I wanted to, let's say I wanted to prove for every natural number um, that it's, uh, it's not less than zero. So the proof that it's not less than zero would be something like not LT of GE applied to nat.0 LE. So there are a couple applications there. Using make app, I'd have to do that in a few different steps. But there's another very powerful tactic called to expr. So to expr, notice from the, the tooltip here, it takes a p expr. So p expr is a pre expression, it's an unelaborated expression. We generally don't, uh, it actually has the same underlying representation as an expression, but we never actually want to construct it like that. We're going to use the quoted notation, um, like we could use for expressions, except with two backticks, which tells Lean, don't try to make too much sense of this. Just kind of take the, uh, the raw structure that I give it. And the raw structure that I'm going to give it is not LT of GE, not dot zero LE, um, and then I need to fill in something here. Um, sorry, not LT. Um, I need to fill in something here. And what I can fill in here is an anti-quotation. E. So I have this expression E. I can insert it into this pre-expression um, by saying, here's a hole in my pre-expression construct the rest of it, and then stick in this expression e in this slot, whatever it might be. So this gives me an unelaborated thing. It's really just like I typed this as input syntax, not lt of ge, not dot zero le. Um, and then it elaborates it using the tactic to expert. And we see in our proof state down here, we've added a whole bunch of not less thans, so multiple applications that we created with one elaboration step. Um, so when you're creating more complicated expressions than single applications, two expert is extremely powerful. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the final video, I'm going to talk about interactive parsing, which is a very important thing if you're writing interactive tactics that take inputs. Notice that this was just a tactic on its own. We didn't have any arguments to it. Um, and also cover a few more subtle points, a few pitfalls that you might come across as you're writing tactics.